Good day, students, and welcome back to Science for Young Minds with Mary Witt Education Center. My name is Teacher Babs, and this series is for Pratum 5. In today's episode, we will learn about Seasonal Constellation and Celestial Sphere. Are you ready to some stargazing? All right, but before that, we will learn some vocabulary words first. At the end of this part, you will be able to spell and pronounce the vocabulary words correctly. Here are the important words for this lesson. Please say them with me. Number one, seasonal. Number two, location. Number three, position. Number four, celestial is fear. Number five, equator. And lastly, number six, hemisphere. Can you say the words by yourself? Good job! Now let's learn more about each word. For our first word, let's read it. Seasonal. Let's say it again. Seasonal. Good job! Can you say the word by yourself? Excellent! Now let's learn an example sentence. Some constellations are seasonal. Please read the sentence in your It was fantastic. Now let's learn the second word. For our second word, we have location. Let's say it again, location. That was fantastic. Can you read the word by yourself? Excellent. Now let's learn an example sentence. Star map describes the constellations that are visible from a location on the earth. Please read the sentence on your own. Wonderful! Now let's learn another one. Please say the word with me, position. Let's say it again, position. Very good! Can you say the word by yourself? Excellent. Now let's learn an example sentence. Earth changes its position around the sun throughout the year. Please read the sentence on your own. That was fantastic. Now let's learn another one. Say the word with me. Celestial is fear. Let's say it again. Celestial is fear. Good job! Can you read the word by yourself? Excellent! Now let's learn an example sentence. On modern star charts, the celestial sphere is divided into 88 constellations. Please read the sentence on your own. Wonderful! Now let's learn another one. Say the word with me, equator. Let's say it again, equator. Fantastic! Can you read the word by yourself? Excellent! Now let's read an example sentence. The celestial equator is directly above the Earth's equator. Please read the sentence on your own. Wonderful! Now let's learn our last word. Say the word with me, hemisphere. Say it again, hemisphere. Good job! Can you say the word by yourself? 
Excellent. Now let's read the last example sentence. If you cut a round fruit into two, each half is a hemisphere. Can you read the sentence on your own? Wonderful! Now that you've learned the words, let's proceed to our lesson part. At the end of this part, you will be able to understand that some constellations are seasonal. We will also define celestial sphere. But before that, let's review our previous lessons first. Last time, we talk about how the rise and set of stars takes place. Also, how planets like Earth revolve around the Sun. And how the pattern of a constellation may take the shape of an object. For example, crops, which resembles a cross, an animal like Ursa Major or the Great Bear in Latin, or a mythological character. Now, step outside on a clear night sky and you will see an amazing sight. There are a lot of twinkling stars. But do you think that can everyone around the Earth see similar constellations? Think and try to answer with a yes or a no. Okay, amazing! The answer is no. Why do you think so? Well, let's observe an example on your screen. The Earth rotates on a tilted axis. So, in a particular place on Earth, it can have a better view to a certain constellation than from other places. To better understand this, let's take a look on an example. Let's just focus on two hemispheres. So as you know, we have at the center, the equator. Above it is the northern hemisphere, which consists of many countries from North America, Europe, North Africa, and Asia. Thailand, for example, is 15 degrees above the equator. How about the Southern Hemisphere? Southern Hemisphere consists of countries from South America, South Africa, and Australia. Now, observers from the North Pole can only see constellations that are visible north of the equator. For example, Ursa Major or the Great Bear. They cannot see the ones below like the crops or the smallest constellation that points to the south. However, if you are living near the equator, you will be able to see all the constellations over a course of a year. It depends on what time of the year you're looking for them. That points to our main topic, which is the seasonal constellations. Why do we see different stars at different times of the year? Take a look first at this example. The example on your screen is the season designations for Northern Hemisphere. When the Earth changes its position around the Sun, it affects the season it is. These seasons are known as winter, spring, summer, and autumn. 
Some stars or constellations can be seen only during a certain period of a year. Sometimes they are not seen in the sky. The constellations that are visible in the sky change from season to season. Here are the names of the 88 constellations. The constellations you see depend on where you live and the season. Most common example is zodiacs or an another family of constellation. There are 12 zodiacal constellations and each of them can be seen at a particular month of the year. Another example is the Orion which is visible in the night sky during winter in the Northern Hemisphere. We also have the Little Dipper or the Urza Minor, which is visible in the night sky all year long, also in the Northern Hemisphere. How about in the Southern Hemisphere? We have Pegasus which is visible in the night sky during spring. Another example from the Southern Hemisphere is Cygnus, which is visible in the night sky during winter. Now, here are the examples of the constellations that are visible in the Northern Hemisphere. People from the North Pole can see these constellations during a certain season of the year. For example, during winter, they can see Orion, Gemini, and Taurus. Or all year, they can see Little Dipper or the Ursa Minor. On the other hand, constellations that are visible in the Southern Hemisphere, for instance, during autumn, we can see Hydra and Leo. All year, they will be able to see crops or the smallest constellation. Now, let's take note. As the Earth changes its position around the Sun, we get different views of the stars in the night sky during different seasons or times of the year. That is, seasonal constellations. Let's proceed to another topic which is, how can we know the position of the objects in the sky? Class, do you know the stars do move? But their motions are only noticeable after a thousand of years. Stars appear to travel in circles around the celestial sphere or an imaginary sphere of which the observer is the center and in which all celestial objects are considered to lie. We will learn more about this on our next episodes. Take note, we view stars as being located on the interior surface of a large a sphere centered on the Earth called celestial sphere. It's trivia time! Do you know that the constellations are still there during the daytime? You just can't see them because the sun is too bright. Tell me what you've learned today, class. That was fantastic to learn more about the secrets of the universe. See you in the next episodes of Science for Young Minds with Meredith Education Center. Happy learning and stay safe!